What would you do if you paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for your brand new home, only to move in and discover problems like this, this, and this? Well, this is a scenario that millions of homeowners in the US find themselves in every year. Low quality, overpriced housing that comes with more stress and issues than it should. A survey done by Real Estate Witch found that 89% of American home buyers deal with premature repairs or maintenance after moving into their brand new homes. And if that wasn't bad enough, 65% of people uncover issues during their home inspections. But it hasn't always been like this. There are millions of homes in the US that are over 100 years old and are still lived in. But homes today aren't built to stand the test of time, making many people wonder, what happened to the high quality of housing from the past? And why is it that homes in other parts of the world are so much better? Back in the day after World War II, brick lost its popularity. New updated building codes didn't require the use of brick anymore, leading to a decrease in demand for it and the skilled workers needed to install it. There was a huge boom of wealth and population growth among the middle class due to the influx of World War II veterans getting married and starting families. And many people wanted to live out their own American dream with the big house, shiny car, and the picket fence. People wanted new homes in the suburbs that looked different from the brick houses in the city. And in order to meet this demand and make big profits, the construction industry had to find ways to build homes quickly and cheaply. The solution was a version of platform framing that had been perfected for mass production by William J. Levitt on the East Coast and David D. Bohannon on the West Coast. Levitt had served as a lieutenant in the Seabees from 1943 to 1945, and David Bohannon had built housing for wartime use in California. Their experiences allowed them to develop the concept of a reverse assembly line for house building, in which teams of workers moved from one house to another, performing the same task on each. While the method was initially a huge success, by the mid-1960s, buyers rejected this assembly line model, calling it cheap and comparing it to mobile homes. Buyers then started opting for more individual, customizable, and larger homes, ushering in the way the majority of homes are built in the US today. Contrary to popular belief, using wood is not what makes a house low quality. The quality of the wood and the way it is used in construction is what determines the overall quality of a house. Up until the 1970s, American and Swedish housing was built in a similar manner. But after the global oil crises in the 70s, Sweden invested in innovation to improve the quality, efficiency, and energy performance of its houses, helping them to become a leader in the field of construction and housing. But the United States went a different direction. Many reports have raised concerns about the quality of new construction across the nation, where many newly built homes have been found to be rotting from the inside, having incorrectly applied siding, drainage issues, gaps in decks and patios, cracks in walls, the list goes on. These type of issues have resulted in many multi-million dollar lawsuits involving major home builders. And while materials are king when it comes to house quality, the workers that build it can literally make or break a home. The lack of skilled workers is the biggest problem facing the construction industry. More than 40% of construction workforce growth over the past decade is comprised of low-skilled construction laborers. Since 2011, the number of entry-level construction laborers has increased 73%, while the number of total construction workers is up only 25%. There's been a worrying decline in the number of young people entering the construction industry. Meanwhile, a huge number of older workers are retiring. Despite construction companies paying an hourly average of $34, compared with nearly $32 for all private sectors, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says the physical demands of the work have made it difficult to attract new workers. But some people believe that homes are intentionally being built in a cheaper way to create a demand for other industries like house repair, gas, gardening, etc. In 2022, the pest industry reached a new record high market size of over $22 billion, and new homes made up a significant percentage of the market. Unlike older properties that use solid materials like bricks, a low quality plywood home is simply not equipped to keep pests at bay, allowing rodents and insects to make their way in eating holes through cheap walls and insulation. Stick framing a house costs around three times less than using brick masonry. Most of the homes you see in the US that look like they're built with brick and stone are actually just facing cladding, attached onto the wood framing. This gives the look of brick, 
but none of the structural integrity that real brick provides. Most of these problems boil down to the laws, or lack thereof. Building restrictions are not as strict in the United States as they are in Europe and other parts of the world. The majority of states in the US receive the lowest possible rating for the quality of their building codes. 39 states were given the lowest rating by FEMA, which also rated each state on a 100-point scale. 19 states, including some of the most disaster-prone places such as Louisiana, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, received a score of zero. The low rating shows that there is a widespread lack of structural protection, especially against windstorms and flooding, through up-to-date building standards. This has led FEMA, the insurance industry, and climate advocates to urge states and localities to adopt the most recent building codes in order to better protect against the impacts of climate change. To make matters worse, a previous study by FEMA back in 2020 also found that many localities had outdated building codes, putting people at an unnecessarily high level of risk for danger and financial costs, but these states simply chose to do nothing about it. Clearly, in the US, we don't build them like we used to, and many experts say that's because we don't have the resources and we can't afford to ignore the climate science anymore. Manufacturing and transporting masonry and other heavy materials contributes greatly to climate change. Bricks have to be burned, and today that means using fossil fuels. Concrete is even worse and is responsible for a huge amount of global carbon emissions. In contrast, wood does have many benefits. In the US, there's a lot of it and it's easily accessible. It can be replenished easily and it absorbs carbon from the atmosphere. Wood also continues to hold carbon even after trees are knocked down, only releasing it when they burn or rot. Since wood doesn't weigh as much as brick, stone, or concrete, it also burns less gas when transported. For LEED certification, which is the gold standard for environmentally friendly buildings, builders must use materials from within 500 miles of the construction site. This requirement has become increasingly more challenging in places like the Mid-Atlantic region due to the scarcity of local brickmakers. Many experts think that our best bet is to merge quality and resilience by using composite materials, which are made by combining multiple materials and can be engineered to have the appearance of wood, but also possess the strength of metal and lightweight properties of vinyl. Metals are the strongest against mechanical stress, followed by ceramics like bricks. Wood is the weakest. However, wood is a good insulator against heat and cold, while metal is the worst. Many experts argue that brick, stone, and hardwood have proved themselves to be reliable and superior throughout history. But others think that we should keep focusing on modern construction methods and design that can adapt in our changing world. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time here on Mythical Modern.